Apple has released a preview of iOS 18 at WWDC 2024 a couple of days ago that's available to Apple developers right now. I've downloaded and installed the software update on my iPhone, and in this video, we're going to show you 15 features and functions that iOS 18 offers, and make sure to watch the video until the end, because there are a lot of cool little things which they've added. So without wasting your time, let's start right away. One of the cool features which they've added is the new dark mode for your home screen icons. You can enable this to be dark permanently if you want to, or you can set it to automatic, so the icon color will change when your phone has dark mode enabled system wide. The icons look pretty cool in this new look, so you can check it out and see if you like it. If you have trouble with seeing specific icons on your home screen and you need to make them bigger, then you can make the app icons larger on the home screen. They will become quite bigger and you can see them more easily. In the past, you would have to go in the settings and then enable the display zoom, but that would make everything on your display bigger, including the elements, the text, and other stuff. But this new feature will only make your app icons bigger on the home screen, which is quite convenient. Aside from the dark mode for your app icons, you have the ability to change your app icon color. So we have this tinted option, and that will allow us to change our app icon tint color to whatever we want. You will have this color slider where you can select basically any color you want for your app icons, and every app icon will have the same tint on your display. We also have this color picker, which will allow us to select a color from our iPhone's wallpaper, and the app icons will then have the same color as your wallpaper that you have set up. Another great feature in iOS 18 that Apple users have been waiting on for years is the ability to put your app icons anywhere on the home screen. You won't be limited by a grid anymore, but you can place the icons at the top, the bottom, the left or right side, as well as the center. Android users have had this for years, but the feature is finally available for iOS users now. Another cool little feature which they've added into the newest update is to change and customize the lock screen shortcuts on your iPhone's lock screen. The default shortcuts were the flashlight and the camera shortcut, and you couldn't change that in previous versions of the operating system. But now you can! You can go over to the lock screen editor and then tap on the little minus icon to remove the flashlight or the camera shortcut. And instead of that, you can add a bunch of different controls from this menu. It can be an alarm, stopwatch, the dark mode shortcut, airplane mode, and many more things. So the lock screen shortcuts are now customizable in iOS 18, which is great. We have a cool little animation at the left and right side of our screen when we press the volume up or down buttons, as well as the power or lock button. You can see that when I'm changing the volume on my device, this little animation plays that indicates that I'm pressing the buttons. It's a very subtle animation, and it looks like I'm pushing in on the screen. The same animation plays when we click on our power button at the right side. Another very popular feature which Apple has added into iOS 18 is the ability to lock any application on our iPhone with Face ID. So if you want to lock your messages, your photos, the Notes app, or any third-party application, you can do that easily with just a couple of steps. After you lock an app, you will have to scan your face with Face ID in order to access it, and I have a whole separate step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can activate this option and use it on iOS 18, and I'll leave the tutorial link in the video description so you can go and check it out. The eight little feature that they've added is the ability to shut down your iPhone from the control center. It's kind of a hidden feature, and all you have to do is to swipe from the top right in order to open your control center, and you'll see the little shut down button at the top right of the screen. If we tap on that button once, it will activate this shut down screen where we can simply slide to power off. This is very useful if you need to shut down your iPhone for whatever reason, but your buttons aren't working or they're unresponsive. The new iOS 18 update will bring RCS support, but it's not available just yet because this is the beta version that's available for developers but the RCS messaging feature will be available when iOS 18 launches later in September. RCS support is expected to allow features such as read receipts, typing indicators, higher quality media, and longer messages in communications between iPhone and Android devices.
In Safari, we have a couple of little changes which they've added. In previous versions of iOS, Safari had those little A letters at the bottom left side, but they've now replaced that with this little icon, and when we click on this, you'll get this little menu where we have a couple of options. If I tap on the three dots at the right side, you'll get all of those options which you had for Safari, including the option to request a desktop version of any website, which is pretty convenient. But yeah! I'll cover Safari on iOS 18 in a separate video, and I'll do more tutorials for it, so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. The calculator application in iOS 18 got the biggest upgrade ever, and they've added a bunch of different options, made some small changes which are really going to improve the experience overall on your iPhone when you need to calculate some things. The UI of the calculator app is a little bit different. A couple of buttons have a different color, and the numbers in the main field are a little bit bolder, where you can see them better, which is a nice little touch. When I start typing some numbers, you can see that the numbers are thicker and bolder, and you can now see the whole equation, because in iOS 18, the numbers won't be deleted after you enter a new number or a new character, which is pretty cool. Another useful thing which they've added to the calculator app is the little backspace button, so if you make a mistake while typing, you can easily delete that number or that character, you don't need to click on the AC button anymore and delete the whole equation which you had entered. If we click on the little calculator icon at the bottom, you'll see a the convert option, and we now have the ability to convert anything directly in the calculator application. We can convert the currency, the area, angle, length, data, and many, many more things. So calculator got a pretty huge upgrade, and I'll make sure to do a separate video on that also. The Notes app in iOS 18 got a couple of new features as well, so let's check out one of those features. We have the ability to add audio notes transcription directly in the Notes app. So click on this little attachment icon in order to add a new audio note in here, and I'll record a quick audio note. I'll say something like, Hello everyone, and how are you today? And then I can tap on Done if I want to save the note. We have the transcript right under the audio note, but if I tap on the note to open it once again, you'll see this Lita Transcribe option at the bottom left. When you click on that button, you'll get a transcription of the whole audio note instantly, which is pretty cool. Feature number 13 is the ability to send iMessages later, or schedule messages. This is a pretty useful little feature that a lot of messaging applications have implemented over the past couple of months. And now, we can schedule messages using iMessage when we're texting our friends or family members. I can open any conversation in the Messages app, and then I'll write a message. Let's say I want to send this message to the person, but I don't want them to receive it right now as they normally would. So I can click on the plus button at the left side, and then swipe one more time until I can see this little Send Later option. When we click on that option, this little wheel will show up on our screen, where we can select a specific date and time on when we want to send this message and when we want the person to receive it. You can just schedule a message and it will be sent at the time that you select. One more cool animation that we have in iOS 18 is the flashlight animation. If you're someone who uses a flashlight a couple of times a day, then you're going to notice this cool little animation. You can see that we have a flashlight photo with the new animation and you can swipe up or down on this if you need to increase or decrease the strength of the light. And the last, but maybe the most important feature of iOS 18, is the ability to customize the control center just as you like. When we open the control center, by swiping from the top right, you can see that the control center looks a little bit different, but we can swipe from the bottom to the top, and we now have pages inside of the control center. The second page has this music player, and the third page has all of your connectivity options such as airplane mode, Bluetooth, the cellular data, and many more things. But let's see the most important part. And that's the first page. We can finally customize our control center by tapping the plus icon at the top left corner of your screen, and we will open the control center editor. If you don't need a specific option, just tap on the little minus button and that control will be removed from the control center. If you need to resize a particular control, you can click on this little handle at the bottom right of the control, and then you can expand it. You can make the controls expand from one field to two fields, 
and some of them will then have the text with the control name, just like you can see here. So you can place the controls anywhere you want on your control center, but you can add a bunch of controls by tapping on this Add a Control option. And you can take your time here and then see which controls you want added to the first page of your control center. I won't go through these controls in depth because I'll do a separate video on how to customize your control center on iOS 18. But those are some of the new features and functions which are available in the newest iOS update. It's a pretty big update with a lot of useful features, so make sure you subscribe to our channel in order to get all of the latest iOS 18 and other tutorials. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.